Hi, this is Debbie, and today I'm reveling in the changing seasons to bring you an autumn watercolour. However, first I want to share with you the new Colorado Crafts Company release, including the oak leaves I'm using today. Three of the new sets start with a new line for Colorado Crafts entitled Whimsy World that have fabulous hundred fonts combined with simple, whimsical illustrations. The three sets are Let It Snow, based on a snow globe theme, Noel with a lovely snowy village, and Tree Town with lots of smaller images making up the shape of a tree. Next up we have three new sets which continue the Big and Bold series. I'll be using this oak leaves and acorn set today and then you also have holly and berries and finally holiday pine. I'll be giving away these six sets to six winners, one each to six people, so please watch to the end of the video to find out how you can enter the giveaway. In the meantime you can only get these exclusively from Samsa Stamp for the next two days before general release. I'll leave links to these new sets as well as to the supplies I've used today in the video description below. Moving on and I adore the autumn season, the colours are right up my street. I painted this autumn leaf last year in a local art class and I wanted to bring those rich colours of greens, reds, oranges and yellows with ageing brown bits to my oak leaves today. In order to get the no line watercolour look that I like, I placed the large oak and acorn image from the set in the misty along with a piece of Archer's rough watercolour card and stamped it in antique linen distress ink. This light water reactive ink will fade into the paints leaving a no line look. As for the watercolour card, Archer's comes in three textures, hot pressed, cold pressed and rough. Hot pressed is smooth, cold pressed has some texture and rough has the most texture. I'm hoping that the added texture in the rough card will help to get texture into my watercolouring with the surface encouraging the greatest granulation of paints. I'll talk more about granulation in a moment. And also the texture is great when using pencils on their sides as I do at the end of the colouring process. So let's jump in and start painting. I've added the panel of watercolour card to a board and taped it down with painter's tape and this will help to prevent the card from warping as I add water. I'm starting out with a light wash of a rich yellow Cranacodone Gold from Daniel Smith and all the paints I've used in today are from Daniel Smith but this colour in particular is one of my all time favourites. It's a really rich yellow gold ochre colour when used in a concentrated mix but it dilutes down to the faintest of warm yellows as I've used here. This Cranacodone Gold base will bring a warm glow to the leaves even when I combine it with other colours or when I paint over the top of it later on. Watercolours are in the main translucent and so the underlying layers shine through and affect layers on top and a warm yellow base is a great starting point especially for the rich glowing autumn tones I want to achieve. I'm using the wet on wet technique of adding more paint to the base layers to bring depth of colour. The paints will only spread where there is water and so will be contained in the wet areas. So only paint one area at a time until the paint is dry unless you want the paint to bleed between areas. In addition to adding depth with more concentrated colour, I'm also preserving highlight areas. I do this by keeping the concentrated areas to one side and if need be by lifting excess paint and water with a dry brush. Let's talk a moment about granulating paints. Many of Daniel Smith paints are known for their granulating properties and this means that the pigment in the paint settles in the dips and valleys of the watercolour card to give more texture and it's a property I love and I think particularly suits autumn leaves. You can see some of the granulation particularly around the edges of the leaves where I combined Lunar Black in some of my mixes. Lunar Black is a granulating paint and is great for adding to mixes to knock them back and create muted shades perfect for the season. I've obviously sped the painting part of this video up and that is to fit in as much as possible of the original footage. For reference this card took me 1 hour and 45 minutes to make. That might seem a long time to some and equally a short time to others. I really enjoy painting so I'm content to paint for as long as possible until I'm happy with the end result. And for this card I kept adding more and more light layers until I slowly built up the range and depth of colour I was after. As the painting progresses I start to hone in on the details. This image is great watercolour as there's lots of space to get creative 
and also there aren't too many details to worry about, but a few leaf veins and a little texture on the acorn caps helps to bring the image together. I'm not one for liking super realistic botanical art, and yet equally not one for really loose styles either. I think somewhere in between is where I fall. Some detail, but not too much. I'm still adding a few last richer layers of colour to the leaves. Watercolours can be deceptive as when dry the colours aren't as rich and vibrant as they are when they are wet. So you often need to go in more rich and more vibrant than you want when the paint is wet so that when it dries you end up where you want to be. I've said it many times but I think a tube of white gouache is a crafter's must have. It's great for adding highlight details and in my opinion is more white and opaque than any gel pen. It's also great for splattering too, for added interest and texture, starry night skies and so many uses. When I pack to go away I always take white gouache with me. I've added a loose light wash of colour to the background behind the leaves and acorns as I felt the white of the paper was a little stark for this autumn scene. It's hard to see in the pictures but it's just a little subtle colour and to add to that I splattered with some leftover paint, a solution of perfect pearls and some of that white gouache. I trimmed the panel down to be just slightly smaller than an A2 card base and then I added more depth of colour and details with coloured pencils. I like to use Faber Castell ones as they keep a hard sharp point but Prismacolor pencils are great too. I use the point of the pencil to create sharper lines for the edges of the leaves and details and then use the pencils on their side and rubbed across the texture of the rough card. It's a bit like doing a wax rubbing of a leaf when a child in that the crayon only grazes the raised areas and so you get more lovely texture. I didn't want to mess around with this card too much, just a simple sentiment to finish it off and so I took a greeting from the oak leaves and acorn set and stamped it in clear embossing ink on black card. I treated with anti-static powder bag to help prevent embossing powder randomly sticking everywhere. I then sprinkled with white embossing powder and heat set before trimming to a skinny banner. I wrapped a double length of twine around the watercolour panel and added it to a Nina Desert Storm card base with foam adhesive. And then I aligned the sentiment strip and again used foam adhesive to keep it in place. And that completes this clean and simple autumn watercolour. Ok so back to the giveaway, leave a comment on the coordinating blog post, I'll put a link below and I will draw the names of 6 winners. Leave your comments by Friday the 11th of October at 11.59pm Eastern and I'll email the winners over the weekend. I'll leave links in the YouTube description below to the products that I've used today as well as a coordinating link to the blog post over at LimeDoodleDesign.com. I want to thank you for joining me today and if you enjoyed this tutorial I'd be delighted if you'd give it a thumbs up and to subscribe to this channel. Also if you'd like to get notified when a new video is out don't forget to hit the bell button next to the subscribe button too. Thanks and I'll see you next time.